Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Did you know that Variety's Brow still hasn't gotten a customized wall skin since his debut? Crazy, right? As it can't be that hard to design something around it, right? Well, while we ponder Bungie's laziness, why don't we cover a Variety's Brow build with the new Quire 1? This has been mentioned by the following viewer, Admest2892, and I was surprised with how well it actually plays out with Quire 1. It's actually the second best exotic to use with the Warlocks since it provides quite a bit of synergy. So, before we start, is there any exotic you'd like to see paired up with Quire 1 and the Warlock? Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Let's start with the general aim and exotic of the build. Our aim is to showcase the exotic combo we currently have and why this variant of the build plays out pretty well in endgame. For this, we will be using Verity's Brow and Quire of 1. Let's start with the exotic, Verity's Brow, with its exotic effect, the 4th magic, it states Weapon final blows with a damage type matching your grenade grants death throws, which provides a grenade damage bonus and grants you grenade energy. When you have death throws and throw a grenade, nearby allies gain greatly increased grenade regeneration for a short time. This exotic pairs well with any legendary or exotic weapon that can quickly garner kills in a short time frame. The idea here is that being able to kill faster will garner death throws effect much more quicker, which means we can always have a 5 stack buff for a grenade when needed. Since we are using void grenades, combining this with a facet of dominance and bravery will overall improve the strength of the kit by 10 volts, and thus provide a more consistent basis of damage that will overall reduce the amount of ammo needed to net kills. This is important since our kit leans heavily into using solely special and heavy ammo usage. Our second exotic is the Choir 1 with its exotic effect, Command Frame, which states A fire's extended range, heavy caliber projectiles at a reduced rate of fire, deals increased precision damage when aiming down sights. We have updated our Choir 1 with the subsequent refit perk so that we can keep netting kills without the need of reloading. This is beneficial when ADSing as ADSing already provides quite a bit of damage against a lot of the enemies so we can pretty much keep our finger on the trigger for as long as we like. When using this heavy, this is also beneficial for quickly clearing out groups when surrounded, but this will burn through ammo quickly, so please be aware of what you're shooting. For aspects and fragments we have the following. Free the Void where getting an ability kill will grant you Devour. Helion where casting your class ability will produce a solar mortar that scorches targets and also ignites them. A facet of Sacrifice where having a solar Void or Arc buff can grant you extra darkness chances and energy from ability final blows. A facet of bravery where defeating targets with grenade grants volatile rounds to void weapons. Defeating targets with powered melee will grant unraveling rounds to strand weapons. A facet of hope where while having the element of buff, your class ability regenerates quickly. A facet of balance where rapidly defeating targets with light abilities grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating targets with dark abilities grants grenade energy. A facet of dominance where your void grenades weaken targets, while your arc grenades jolts them. The build doesn't require a lot of changes since its previous copy. As a must have, a facet of dominance for the grenade debuff and facet of bravery for the volatile rounds applied to void weapons are required for making this build as lethal as possible in end game. The increased damage from all points will make using Quire 1 usage even more stronger than it currently is, while also reducing the amount of ammo needed to kill enemies the moment they show up. I have paired this with Nova Bomb since it has a low cooldown compared to our Solar Super, and I was planning on adding the Facet of Dawn to the build for even more damage for me and my allies. However, doing so would mean to remove Facet of Sacrifice instead, which would result in us not getting our transcendence form as much as possible in the build. With how the kit is laid out, we generally need to make sure we have everything on hand just to be safe. For the mods and stats, we have both Resilience and Discipline marked as our top priority. Resilience, we have R's at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. I have not added a Resistance mod, as we do not have the space to do so. However, if you're fine with not using a Sniper, and don't need the extra Reserve mod for them, then you can add the following to fill in the gap instead. As mentioned last time, Vortex Grenades provide the highest amount of damage for what Prismatic Grenades can provide overall, which for me, pairs well with a high powered energy AR. This grenade will require a constant cooldown since its cooldown ability is much more high than everything else provided. Luckily, 
Averti's Brow will grant a 50% cooldown for its usage, and we do also have Devour for that extra push as well. With this being easily covered, having these additional mods will also help make the build much more impactful. Bolstering Detonation times 1 for a 12% class ability buff, Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, Momentum Transfer times 1 for a 12% mini buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Additional mods we then have the following Harmonic Siphon will create orbs of power via void weapons. Special to Heavy Finder, Reserves, and Scavenger Ammo mods for the void and stasis weapons we are using. Charged up times 1 for increasing the maximum stack of armor charges by plus 1. Void Weapon Surge times 1 for a 10% Void Weapon buff. And Powerful Attraction for automatically collecting orbs of power when using our Cloud's ability. As we have covered our exotic secondary weapon, I would then advise you to pick some suitable weapons for the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits towards the build. Primary, we have the Faultless Sniper Rifle with Overflow and Adagio. Uh, try something new for this season. Uh, the following sniper is the perfect weapon to use in endgame for destroying barrier shields, applying high damage, and good flexible stats all round. This isn't a sniper that everyone can get sadly, and I know not everyone will want to use snipers if they're not comfortable with them. So, using Blast Furnace with the following perks is a good alternative to use, or if you do want to try snipers out, the Succession Sniper with Lead from Gold will be the perfect sniper in the main for such a build. Heavy, we have the Hammerhead with Destabilizing Valves and Killing Tally, as I thought it would be most appropriate to use a machine gun with deep reserves on hand. You will run out of ammo with the weapons we are running if you are not careful, and using an adaptive frame machine gun is the perfect weapon to have on hand as you can use this as a proto-primary weapon when needed. With what we currently have on hand, we generally shouldn't run out of ammo too fast, but following the same method like I'm doing will guarantee a better run when compared to without it. Now compared to the class bond version that only has half the perk active, the full variety bra version is much more suitable when we lean heavily into our grenades and void weapons on hand. We mentioned last time that by using varieties with quite one, we can vastly enhance our grenades to clean up the biggest threats around while also increasing the overall effectiveness of Choir 1 while in action. This resulted in a build that played out fairly well, with being both aggressive and well curated for focusing on damage. With the following version on the show, it plays similar to our previous version and is in many ways perfect for those who want a replica of the previous build without the need of the exotic class bonds. I have made some changes towards the build with us using our Void Super to cover the Cyber Mod section, and also because said Void Super has lower cooldown rate compared to our pseudo version instead. At the same time, we also changed our main primary to a sniper so that we can break the barriers much more faster, do more damage with the accompanying debuffs, but most importantly, try something different that we don't always rely on. Lastly, I updated my choir 1 to have Substance Refit applied to it like previously mentioned, just so that we can keep the ongoing pressure and kills going, and it's something I may mention before as it's one of the best perks to add for this weapon. Everything for the build fills and plays nicely for endgame users, with some room available to update the build as you see fit. Only problem the build will have is the special ammo availability, which is something I did plan out as mentioned in the stats section. However, even with all the right things in mind, we still came across the issue of running out of ammo down the line, so alternatives may be needed if you don't feel comfortable doing what I'm doing. Overall, the appeal of the build will fit those who play a more aggressive playstyle compared to others. While playing it slow and steady is recommended because of the ammo issue you may have, the amount of damage being pulled off should be enough to make a noticeable impact with how less ammo will be overall used. Play it smart, and the build will do just fine in the end game. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos, then leave a like and sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section, and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.